further ado, I will pass the floor, the baton to Damien from the toolbox. So welcome, Damien. Thank you very much, Andre and Zanok and all of the NLCs. This is quite an amazing platform for us to interact with and to learn and grow together. Uh, my name is Damien Foxall. I'm the Sustainability Program Manager, Manager for a professional sports team. We're currently based here in Brittany in northern France. It's raining outside, which is normal for this time of year. Um, but most importantly, we're here with you today to kick off this series of workshops, which is going to take us through the process together over the next uh, over the next months. And we're going to use the Toolbox platform uh, as a background uh, for this work to help you and you know everyone on the call along this journey because we learn together. Um, so I'll just introduce the team. So Isaac. Murray, the Toolbox Community Manager, and myself were actually um, uh, delighted to be invited and to have joined many of you um, in Seoul, Korea recently. Uh, and also on the call, we have um, Amy Munro, Sustainability Officer for, um, um, for, the, for the 11th Hour Racing Team, um, and one of the cre original creators and founders of the Toolbox, along with Ingrid Butler, uh, sustainability specialist and consultant, Butler International Sports Consulting, who's very familiar with the IOC uh, community um, and um, you know what we do, what you all do on this call. So we've got an amazing lineup, um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Next slide, please. So underlying all of this, of course, is um, the I think we all recognize the need to move into. Uh, a sustainable pace for our future, for our children, children, and to do it in a credible way. And underlying all of this for us, or the standard, the reference standard for the sporting sector is the United Nations Framework for Climate Action, um, which outlines five fundamental principles uh, as part of this commitment. And I know that many of you on this call have already signed up to the commitment, and that's the first step, right, is to get the... Um, is to get the engagement from the director, from the from the top down, but also from the, uh, the wider team. Um, the principles basically um, commit us to a comprehensive sustainability approach. So first of all, looking at what does sustainability mean to our, our, our organization and applying systemat systematic efforts to, um, to, uh, to move forward. Um, specific, of course, and uh, central to the conversation, especially at the moment, is, is action around climate change. And um, that's really going to be uh, at the heart of any um, good sustainability uh, program. Uh, and the importance, of course, for any program is really to, to learn both as an organization, to listen to all levels of um, the organization, whether it's the, the board level, or the you know workers and technical staff on the ground, everyone will have a very important voice to to add, uh, and also reaching out beyond our beyond our organisation. So this is about educating for climate change. It's not about necessarily just educating others, but bringing this information into your program. Um, and the fourth principle is really around the a very important notion that every time we spend a dollar, a euro, or or any time we procure a product or service we have an impact and how can we reduce that impact or maybe even change that impact from negative to positive? How can we uh, consume in a sustainable uh, way and have a positive impact in our broader network? Um, advocating for climate change then really is about um, showing leadership and using the amazing platform that sport has to reach out to our audience. And I think this is where uh, we, you know, obviously it's about um, walking the walk initially but then sharing what we're doing and inspiring others this is everything that we really recognize of course the power of sport and who we are so that really underlines what we are going to be doing as part of our sustainability work uh, and everything we do through the toolbox in the next eight steps uh, over the next few months will be about um, moving from commitment to action and doing that in a credible way which can be recognized um, compared and put everyone in a credible place to move forward so maybe we can just move to the next slide to start with we really need to just take a moment 
because of course in the normal sort of rush of the day-to-day -day operations it's hard to plan forward we're very much wrapped up in a in a busy world uh, and it's very important that we sort of zoom out in this case let's say above the trees and get a bigger perspective on what your organization does uh, what it has done in the past what it's doing now and what you think it should be doing in the future and what your staff your team and your stakeholders think you should be doing in the future and so this is, really is the starting point it sounds um, very basic but it's a crucial step um, up to date i think we can see organizations over the past decades and years kind of doing let's call it um, sort of um, you know, sort of bespoke sustainability work or, you know, kind of ad hoc work. Um, in this case, if we're really putting together a comprehensive program, we need to take a moment to zoom out and really consider who we are and what our intentions are. Um, so along this journey, there is a lot of information to collate from, from many stakeholders and many, uh, and many sources. Uh, there's a process to, to follow which really simplifies this journey because it can be a very complex journey and it's really hard to know where to start. And that's what the toolbox does. It allows us to take uh, a, a comprehensive um, but simple approach from the very first step of discovering who we are to um, at the end of the day, action and reporting on those actions. So I'm going to hand over to Amy Monroe now just to describe how the toolbox can help us in that pros process. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so um, this is a screenshot of what the toolbox platform looks like online. And um, in to give you a little bit of background in 2020 11th hour racing team along with the along with all of our you know a lot of our network and community founded the toolbox to help make um to take what we were doing in the team and make it um more accessible for organizations um to to establish their own sustainability programs recognizing initially that other teams in in our race and didn't have the same amount of resource that we did from a sustainability perspective. So how could we create what we had done and um, and make templates and guides to enable others to do the same? And it has built from there. So contained within the toolbox are a set of guides, practical templates and case studies to walk you through a simple step process. Um, it's available for free on the Creative Commons platform, which is based on the ethos that when we share, everyone wins. And the value of the toolbox is really in in you guys, in the community that creates, uses, and maintains the toolbox. It's now available in English, French, and Spanish, and we'll be exploring some of the tools. So um, if you haven't already, please um, head to the website, which is sustainabilitytoolbox.com, <laughs> and download the assets specifically in, in step one and step two. Um, Right. So this is what it looks like. Um, uh, these are all of the assets, the documents that sit within the toolbox. Uh, we're going to be focusing on steps one and two today, and in particular, the practical templates, which are a, an assessing your starting point survey, um, a staff survey, and a sustainability policy template. Um, and then the outcome of today will be to um, have drafted the very first draft of a sustainability policy or knowing the process of what it goes through to create one, um, which will be a guiding, you know, the start of a guiding document um, unique to your own organization. And um, yes, so handing over to you, Isaac. Brilliant. Uh, thanks, Amy. Yeah, so um, like Amy said, um, step one is all about um, figuring out you know where your organization sits and we'll be drafting a policy um, and the guiding documentation um can I have the next slide please so of course everyone on this call is part of the olympic movement in some regard um but you know this first step is to take a deep dive into our processes a deep dive into what our organizations represent and what sort of impacts um we have and then once we've thought about those impacts we're going to think about how we can amplify the positive ones and maybe mitigate the negative ones so that's kind of what the over overriding theme is within step one next slide please um so when starting any 
project or program, the hardest thing to do, of course, is to get going. So this is why we've created this first step. Um, you will need to know how you, if you're making sure that you're, you know, doing it properly, make sure you're going down the right path. You don't want to greenwash or anything like that. Um, so this step is to sort of help you explore, you know, and reflect and discover what is really within your organization to make sure that you are hitting every single mark and not just doing piecemeal initiatives here and there. Um, so in this step, you will understand um, who you are, what you do, you'll define, sorry, you'll define who you are as an organization. You will understand why you're implementing a sustainability program and why your organization is already so successful. Um, you'll also take a look at some of the current initiatives that you are already doing, um, and also the landscape of um, sustainability and where your organization fits within that landscape. And lastly, there's also, um, we'll also look at the resources. So not only what do you need within your organization um, to make the sustainability policy work, but who do you need in your organization? Who, what are the roles and responsibilities that people already have and what roles and responsibilities can they take on to make this work? Um, so before we go and deep bit dive into the step, um, I'd like to just share with you the resources that are available. So this that's on your screen at the moment is the quick guide. So these are concise visual references for you and your team to consider what's in the toolbox step and um, how to approach it. So they can be great for sharing around when trying to engage your team and also just giving that quick snapshot of what you're doing in this step and what it's all about. Um, next slide, please. The other resources in this step, of course, include the templates, which we'll be going through um, shortly. Um, and we also have the how-to guides and case studies based around how to complete this step. Um, of course, we have the sustainability handbook, which is available on the ANOC website. Um, and this includes all the steps, as well as mapping to the UNFCC principles, which we'll go into in a bit. Um, we also have a video coming soon of a bit of a recap of the things we'll go through in this uh, webinar. Um, and that takes you through step one as well. Um, but for now, let's um, have a look at what the templates um, do and what's involved with those. So in these templates, um, the first one is the assessing your starting point template. And that template asks questions around six different themes. So those themes are your organization, exploring your organization's history, its purpose, um, its governance, even down to its finances and legal requirements. Um, and it also asks what sustainability initiatives might already be in place. Um, we then have your people, um, remembering that the pe your people are one of the biggest assets when it comes to putting in place a sustainability program or any kind of organizational change. Um, your operations. So in this section, you take a granular look at the day-to-day um, evaluating where your impacts lie in that regard. Um, your industry, which thinks about the wider context of your organization and how you can share knowledge amongst people uh, within the industry and within the, uh, with other NMCs. And then you have your client base. So in this section, we will think about what will uh, athletes and fans and end users be looking for um, and what are the sustainability trends that already exist among your um, service users or amongst your sort of product users. And lastly, we have your legacy. So approaching this theme, we really want you to think about the question, how can our organization be a force for good? Um, and this helps us think about how our organization can go beyond sustainability and become truly regenerative. So not lasting for generations to come, as we often think about sustainability being, but also benefiting future generations, how can it benefit um, the people who are going to engage with your NFC um, in the future. And the second template is the staff survey, and this helps to, of course, engage the staff and bring voices from across your organisation into the planning process and making sure that everyone is heard. So the information and data that you gather from this survey um, will be used down the lines to inform your sustainability policy but will also inform the stakeholder engagement and identifying issues which are in step three and four um, respectively. Um, again, you can customize either of these templates uh, to see how you see fit. Um, you can explore different things. But again, all the tools that we present aren't prescriptive. 
we invite you to tail, tailor them and make them um, your own. Um, so if you feel your staff need more information or content to understand the purpose of your sustainability programme, you can add some literature while you share your survey, or you can add different questions. Say you have discovered something in your um, assessing your starting point survey about your operations. You might want to ask certain people, um, you might want to ask people in different departments questions about that particular um, impact. And then you can tailor the staff survey to do that too. Um, so we'll have a little look at those tools and how you can do that in a minute. Um, but going into the next slide, um, we have mapped um, all of the tools and templates to the UNFCC principles. So in that handbook that we have provided for you on the back few pages, um, we have all the UNFCC principles and ways that you can sort of think about completing these templates and conceptualize um, filling them out and making sure that you're um, that you're meeting all the UNFCC principles at every turn. Um, for the sake of these webinars, we're going to show you the most uh, relevant principle um, to this template. And again, but again, the handbook covers all the principles and how um, you know you can interweave those principles when working with all of the templates. So, in terms of the assessing your starting point template. Um, principle one is start here um, because in this template you will be considering which systems in your, your, your organization is a part of and this will help contextualize what's important um, and sense which areas of stewardship around sustainability are emerging. Um, with regards to the other principles, um, this step will also give you a baseline to reduce your climate impacts, um, referring to principle two, um, so that your stakeholders know where your starting point is um, this also will help you report um, on your journey further down the line which will meet principle five um, and you'll also realize the um, level of education that will be required to realize how much people already know about the about the topics already know about the impacts um, and this will help you to meet principle three um, keeping in line with principle four um, we ask you to sort of think about the material, materiality of your organization. You know, if you have kit that you need to build, if you have equipment that you need to build, um, think about what materials sort of come through your supply chains um, in your organizations. Um, so going into the staff survey. Um, in principle one, um, we ask you to, um, so the staff survey is imperative to meeting principle one. Um, because we consider that we're bringing in as many voices as we can from within our organisation. So the staff survey might bring light to important considerations that haven't been noticed by senior leadership, and this will help you change systemically and not just from the top down. Um, you'll also be meeting principle three, as um, you may need to provide resources and literature, as, as I said before, um, to, to educate your staff further. Um, and again, the other principles um, are mentioned in the handbook. So, next slide, please. Uh, now that we've prepared ourselves, um, it's time to get into the starting blocks and to get going um, with our sustainability um, programs. Next slide, please. Yeah, I, I, so, Isaac, sorry to interrupt, just one second. Uh, we are getting your uh, French feedback on the English channel. Yeah, I'm also getting that too. Yeah. Uh, Rudolf, can you check if you're in the French? Okay, I think we can go on. Isaac, I think should be yeah. okay. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, now we're going to split into breakout rooms. So um, we asked um, all participants to download the resources before this webinar, and hopefully you have. If not, um, maybe have a little um, download now, see if you can if you can get it up uh, quickly. But we're going to split into breakout rooms, um, and we'd like you all to fill out the assessing your starting point template, 
Um, and then if you have time, take a look at the staff survey. So we'd like to, you to consider the roles and different viewpoints of your organization and really have a, a deep dive on what your organization does um, and you know, why sustainability is important to you. Um, so as we're doing this, um, think about, there's, some, there's five questions on the right-hand side for you to think about. When we come back to the um, when we come back to the main room, we'll share some thoughts around uh, how we address these questions using the assessing your starting point template. Um, and really, what you want to think about here is discovering as much as possible. The more information you fill in, the more you paint a picture of your organisation, and you're able to identify the impacts um, that are prevalent within your organisation. So. Um, we have a facilitator in each breakout room, so please feel free to ask questions and have a bit of an informal conversation if you want, share your thoughts as you fill out the template. Um, and like I said, this exercise is for you so that you can start make a start on using these templates um, and develop them further after this workshop. So anything you want to put in, anything you want to change, any way you want to tailor it, um, please feel free to do so. so I think if we are ready, we can have a go at uh, looking at the assessing your starting point template uh, in the breakout rooms. Do we have the breakout? Okay, thank you everyone. Um, it's good to see everyone coming back. Could we go back one slide, um, Andres? Brilliant, cool. Um, so now we'd like to leave the uh, floor open to everyone to see what kind of things you discovered during uh, that process. Um, so first, was, is there anyone who would like to share um, anything that they found um, from that process? Can I put forward that, Claire, if that's all right? Just, you had a great um, soundbite there on what sustainability means to you in the innovative, smaller ways we can take actions to the games. Would you mind just speaking to that again in the wider group? Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Baklai from uh, Palau National Olympic Committee. Sustainability is uh, very important for us in in the Pacific reg region in Oceania because of uh, many challenges uh, with the climate change challenge. So it's quite a, an important uh, work that the sport can play a, 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 a critical role to ensuring that our organization is uh, has sustainability strategies and how we can uh, uh, deal with the issues of climate change. I just said in the breakout room that this tool and this uh, bringing everyone to this training is so important to us because it, you know, just doing the step one, the task that we just did, uh, really uh, added my perspective as a NOC leader in our community of what sustainability importance to us are the values, the work that needs to be done. And I wanted to share that there are things that are happening already in uh, smaller games, national games, where uh, we are encouraging everyone to make sure that uh, we do reduce, recycle, and reuse, uh, no plastic. So we bring uh, our own uh, culture to the games. Uh, where we don't uh, use uh, any more of uh, plastic uh, utensils. Uh, uh, greener games where when you travel, uh, when you travel further, you get to plant trees promoting uh, carbon uh, the credits for the community. So there are so many things happening, but just it's so great that ANAC is putting this together because it's important for us to uh, understand uh, the roles and responsibilities and the values of sustainability and its link uh, to what we're doing on, in the ground uh, in terms of using sporting events uh, to have a sustainability organization So, and strategy. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think there's just some really interesting points there around you know, thinking about why we're actually doing this. I think if you, with anything you're gonna endeavor to do, any project that you start, you have to think about what main objectives are and what the outcomes are um, and what what the benefit is of doing that right so um yeah i think it's it is um really important that we consider that and uh, yeah i'm glad you um you're happy with the, the template so far um yes thank you excellent yeah um so is was did anybody have any interesting considerations around 
um, what their organization consumed, maybe what they were already doing in the sustainability space that could um, be adapted to create better impacts. Did anybody discover anything there? From uh, from our group uh, here, Isaac, I think uh, uh, they were starting and not all of them had already downloaded the document, so that took us a little while, but uh, some already had the document ready. And uh, I think Carlos uh, Villegas from Colombia had a, a, an overall uh, in the first initial impression that I think would be interesting if he could share. Carlos, if you could uh, share with us. Uh, yes, uh, Gustavo, as you said, uh, we are just uh, downloading the documents. Uh, we found them very interesting. And now the challenge is to get the information from our organization to fill in the, uh, the Excel um, templates. But uh, so far, so good. Yeah, I think uh, as we spoke briefly, I think this is key because I think this way you bring the discussion forward and you ask everybody to engage. And this is already a, a very important step uh, in increasing the maturity of our organizations in, in terms of sustainability. Thanks a lot, Carlos. Yes, thanks, Carlos. Um, for sure, yeah, it's 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 great to see that um, people are getting through with that. Um, just an, as a, a a comment to what you said, Gustavo, about uh, a lot of people joining the toolbox now, signing up now. Um, there is there may be a an email that you get that says your membership is pending, or um, you're waiting for an activation email. Um, I've, on the inside, been on the back end and um, activated everyone's account. So if you've been having trouble logging in and accessing those, you should be able to uh, do so now. Um, Kimunya, you have a question. Oh, well, well, not a question, but uh, more of a comment. Um, we, 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 as I shared in the group, we have the youngest uh, commission, that's the Sports and Sustainability Commission. And one of the areas that we started off with was um, to draft um, an environmental and sustainability policy, uh, which is still in draft form. Uh, we are waiting to present it to the executive committee for adoption. And then now from there, that's now when we, we, we put forward a complete strategy, uh, uh, you know, the longer term uh, strategic plan. And I think these tools will come in very handy because again, we're flying blind, uh, doing the best we can with what we, what, what we are, what we have but I'm now seeing uh, a direct link back to the UNFCCC process, uh, which I was uh, involved in when I was uh, back working for the World Wide Fund for Nature a few years ago. So yeah, so th this is very exciting. I can't uh, wait to see what comes out of this. Excellent, brilliant. It um, sounds like you're already on the way to completing some of these steps already with having already drafted a sustainability policy and Hopefully we'll see in the next um, step that um, you know we can link some of those things up to the UNFCC principles again as well. But yeah, again, this sort of conceptualizing does help to fill in the um, sustainability policy element, but we do have a bit more of a um, sort of rest and recommended key elements that we would put in your sustainability policy, which we will go through um, in the next um, in the next slide. I'll take one more question or comment from uh, Amine. And then we'll move on to um, number two. Hi. Yeah, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, all the team of ANOC for uh, this uh, great initiative. Actually, it's not about the question, it's only about uh, uh, comments from our side. So as I know, seen from Morocco, we are working now in developing in uh, um, sustainability uh, plan, but we start with an action before because we noticed that the um, energy consumption of our headquarters was really high. So we worked on that with an audit that starts uh, two years ago, and we had many actions on that, and we end up um, reducing uh, considerably the um, consumption of uh, energy consumption in our headquarter. So we'd be glad to share that with you, and for sure that we're going to use uh, these steps and the guide that you are sharing with us in order to develop more a sustainability um, a plan for our NOC. Thank you. Isaac, would you mind if I just comment to that? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I think at the end of the day, the, the 
toolbox steps as there are sustainability steps represented through the toolbox are um, I think Amy might have already said this, but they're inspired and aligned with tools and standards from the sustainability sector. Um, uh, and it's a sort of a linear process, but it's not prescriptive. So, uh, you know, just coming to your comment there around, you know, we felt that first of all, we needed to do an audit to understand a little bit more the, 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 the sector and some of the things that we can do before we actually build out a comprehensive program. Makes total sense, right? And and um, and then of course you come back to okay now we've got an understanding of this one issue we can apply those type of processes or learnings to the broader landscape so that's you know that's spot on and um, speaking to energy um, we did um, an audit in fact of our own because we built a boat to compete in the event that we're we're competing in now we did an energy audit of the boat build process and found that actually the energy. Um, involved in the products and processes uh, was one of the bigger items where we actually had the opportunity to make impact and change. Uh, actually, the opportunity would have, if we'd applied 100% renewables to all of our suppliers, we would have reduced our greenhouse gas footprint by 20%. That's a huge number, even though electricity isn't necessarily one of our big um, areas of impact, the opportunity was was huge. So. Uh, again, like that's that's really interesting learning a meeting and and um, uh, yeah, like you said, then it allows you to come back to the to the start of the process and use that lens for uh, looking at all of the issues and opportunities. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Back to you, Isaac. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Damien, and uh, thanks everyone for your contributions on um, that one. So that kind of rounds up the start of step one. Of course, again, you can um, all you can all take those templates home like they're already downloaded on your computer and develop those as we go further forward through um, the program. So moving on to uh, step two now uh, on our next slide. Um, maybe just back one slide. <laughs> um, yeah, so now we've looked um, internally at our organization, uh, it's time to establish the direction which you will be going in next. So, in this step, we'll be sort of zooming in on our organization, creating a collective voice that we can all deliver sustainability on. Um, and then zooming out, we will be able to use this new sustainability policy to interact with our stakeholders and guide the conduct of our organization going forward um, as we talk with our other stakeholders to make our sustainability program a realization. So next slide, please. Uh, again, this is our quick guide. This is available on the toolbox site as part of the toolbox resources and um, but having a public and um, transparent sustainability policy um, is the cornerstone of any sustainability program and this summarized organizational outlook will help uh, your efficiency it will help you save costs and it will help increase your customer or fan base and uh, make your services more attractive and accessible of course so your policy is that driving force for change and it'll be the talisman um, that you go back to um, as you lead your sport or your national sport organization through the sustainability transition um, in addition to this it provides uh, increased resilience from tighter future regulations that may be uh, implemented from future olympic events or from future international uh, law or national law um, as well as facilitating engagement um, with your internal and external stakeholders, um, as mentioned before. Um, so this quick guide here gives you a quick visual reference of the eight sections that the toolbox recommends for a sustainability policy. And these key elements, again, are not prescriptive. You can add another element if you like. Um, I know that in the annex they added um, a sustainability commitment as a, a whole thing instead of step eight, so a whole old stanza. Um, so again, these are not prescriptive. You can add things, you can take them away, but these are what we recommend um, you would include in your sustainability policy. So the first key element is about your vision. And this should be an aspirational statement about what the future of your organization and community will look like. Um, it can be quite broad um, and quite abstract. Um, so yeah, think big on this one. Um, and then moving on to the mission statement. A mission statement should support the vision statement and provide, this, provide a description about how your organization will go about 
achieving that vision. So what are the activities your organization will do to help realize that vision? How will you get to that, that place you can see in the distance? How will you get to that light at the end of the tunnel? Um, the third one is a definition of sustainability. And here you will make a, a definition yourself. Um, sustainability is quite a broad term. It covers a wide range of topics. Um, you want to define what it means in the context of your organization. Um, there is a sample definition from the Brunton report, I believe, in the um, template, um, which is kind of the original definition of sustainability um, that my geography professors will tell me. But yeah, again, it's about you. It's about defining what uh, sustainability means to you. Um, in the scope section, um, you'll be able to clearly state the activities um, that your sustainability policy and program applies to. So is it just the NOC or is it the NOC and your federations? Is it events within the NOC? Um, think about how that policy um, will, will build itself. What is that scope? And of course, using the assessing your starting point template to inform that as well. Um, the next Sorry, and also just before before we go into that, um, sorry, back back to the quick, <laughs> that's it. Um, your organization um, should reference some high level um, targets and uh, goals. So these might not be too prescriptive for your sustainability policy, but outlining those goals where you want to be um, is, is imperative for a sustainability policy. One thing that we will say um, that the UNFCC does stipulate that um, organizations that sorry that signatories should apply to is the zero net zero target for 2040 and halved um, net zero, halved emissions by 2030. So if you can include that one in your policy, um, you will be meeting the UNFCC um, guidance there. Um, for the next step, for the sorry, sorry, still, still, still staying on the quick guide. Sorry, thank you. Um, so for number six, we'll be implementing the strategy for our sustainability plan, talking about how you're going to track and measure your progress. And um, then we'll talk a little bit about in our policy. We'll talk a bit about the how we're going to report, how frequently will you do this? Will you do it quarterly? Will you do it yearly? Um, so the idea is just to commit to periodic reporting. Um, so that you can identify opportunities and make adjustments to your operations um, so you can continually improve. And then once you're happy with the wording of your policy, once you've written all that copy up and it, it sounds really good, you then go to your directors, the directors of your organizations, um, and they will uh, sign the policy um, and demonstrate that culture of support. So making sure that the heads of the organization are accountable and this accountability shows that your policy is integrated throughout your organization um, and is also creating systemic change through the organization as well. Next slide, please. Um, again, there's a wealth of resources to help you with this. Uh, the quick guide that we've just gone through, the videos that will be coming soon and again in the handbook. Um, but right now, we'll be going into the sustainability policy template. So um, next slide, please. As, as mentioned, um, you'll be creating copy for your sustainability policy using these eight key elements. Um, again, they're not prescriptive. Add what you want, tailor in the way that you, that you need to. This policy will be owned by you and it will be delivered by you. So this policy is going to contribute to all of the steps of the toolbox. It's going to inform how you deliver on your sustainability program. Um, but particularly, I would say, uh, step three, as you will be using it to engage with your stakeholders and to uh, bring people on board um, with your sustainability program. So how does this help us meet the UNFCCC principles? Next slide, please. Well, in order to get the most out of our policy, we need to make sure we deliver on these commitments. And first and foremost, again, is adding that um, target of reducing Greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030 and a long term target to reach net zero by 2040. This will be helping you meet uh, principle two, as of course you'll be reducing your overall climate impact um, through that target. So please make sure that you include that in there. Um, aligning with principle one, the policy um, will guide um, 
will guide your organisations through the process of ascribing governance and responsibility at the board level, as said, as mentioned. Um, and again, this shows a commitment to operational change throughout your organisation with the positive impacts cascading down through to federations, through to the individual local sports level, if it can go that far. Um, and yeah, making sure that it's a systemic effort uh, as part of your policy. Um, it also directly applies to principle five, as the policy will be how you communicate your path towards um, a meaningful sustainability policy. It's how you're going to communicate that with your stakeholders. Um, it will, it'll also be delivering on principle three by educating um, people who see your policy. Um, and it'll also help uh, meet principle four as well, um, as you'll be sort of addressing how you're going to um, make sustainable and responsible consumption through your value chain too. Um, so moving on to our next slide. Um, sustainability um, is much like sport in that we all play our games and we make great achievements in those games that we play. However, there's always going to be another season, there's always going to be another event, and you're always going to be able to improve on your record and perform better and better and better. Um, similarly, with sustainability, there's never a point where you become sustainable, there's never a point where you've visibly completed sustainability. So just like teams don't stop training once they've got a medal, um, we don't stop once we've become sustainable. Sustainability is a, a constant process of improvement. Um, it's a constant process of um, bettering your impacts and making sure, again, you increase the positive and mitigate the negative. So with this policy, we'll be establishing the rules that we're going to play by during these games uh, when we deliver our program um, and making sure that we have a collective vision of how we will continue to improve. So. Moving on, um, we're going to go back into our breakout rooms and you will have a go at writing the policy uh, using template, the template in the sustainability policy, um, sorry, the, step, the sustainability policy in step two. Um, and just like we did in the first breakout room, you'll have uh, 10 or 15 minutes to fill in as much as you can and create your own policy. Um, remember what you learned in the assessing your starting point template and remember that this isn't um, prescriptive, you can tailor it uh, to your own organisational needs. So we've also got those questions on the right hand side um, and they should help you inform what should go in your policy. So make sure you've included that net zero target. Does your policy make commitments to monitor and report against climate impacts? Um, those kinds of things. So we'll leave those questions up and I think um, Andres will put us into breakout rooms again. Welcome back everyone. Welcome back. Um, I think we have uh, everyone here. It seems that 94 participants are back. So, um, yeah, I would just invite um, any any interesting insights um, that have, have been discovered while going through this policy. Has anybody um, made any discoveries around those questions? Um, how are people making systemic efforts? Does anybody have um, any insights that they want to share? Isaac, if that's okay, I wouldn't mind um, maybe just bringing um, Fahad from Qatar in because um, they've been doing a lot of good work. Excellent, yeah. Hi, can you hear me now? Ah, sorry, I had this problem. Yeah, so I, I shared back in the breakout room um, one of the strategy that we use to, to implement sustainability within the organization as an organization is that we went to, through initiating uh, the program of getting certified for sustainable event management on, on all the events that's been hosted by the Olympic Committee of Qatar. So uh, to do that, actually, we formed, uh, let's say, a specific handpicked team from the different departments, including the um, to, to be transformed later on to change agents once the this event is dissolved and come back into the organization. Um, and that's helped us help us a lot because there are, as, as Damien mentioned, maybe news as well, there are, there are different sides of the organization definitely impact the efforts and the challenges and the resistance into transition into a, a more sustainable from policy, uh, drafting and reforming, uh, going back into the procedures and the actual executions of uh, of the different sustainability elements. 
Um, so what we did uh, after we get certified uh, at, the, uh, at uh, beginning of this year, um, those uh, those different team members, you know, are they came back to their to their department originally within the organization and started to uh, let's say create this organic uh, development and change culturally phase. So what we found is that it's very easy to put policies and to bring a consultant from outside and to do this and that. But this has required a paradigm shift within the each individual in the organization to make sustainability sustainable. You know, that's I believe that's the biggest challenge of any organization trying to implement is how to make the sustainability concepts and philosophy and everything that we do from knowledge management, from quality, from environment, from um, uh, you know, even even the supply chain, supply chain, you know, within the vendors, how we can educate the vendors, how we start to become, as as you mentioned, uh, as that letter before that uh, in the in the policy, how, how the skin, the face out of the organization, become an actual reflection of the internal organism that forms this organization, and there's no kind of schizophrenia between speaking about something on the outside, but inside you don't live it on a day to day. So I I. I this is this is the lessons learned from us as a team in Qatar that we wanted to share with everyone is that uh, it's easier to do because you have an event you have a certain time and it's easy for you to control it's an it's a controlled environment because it's like a test lab and then from there you're going to get this iterative use of that and and use it gradually until you start to build the capabilities so that you can have the capacity in order for you to implement sustainable uh, you know requirements and the policy so that's what I talked to Damien later on, and he asked him to share it with you in this room. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. There's some really um, interesting points there. I really like what you were saying about making sustainability sustainable. Um, you know, I think we, when we think about doing these policies, we want them to be evergreen, and we want it so that we want it to be the case that you know governance isn't compromised by the next set of people that um, come on. Um, you know, this sustainability policy should assist you in, in being organic and guide that evolution um, you know and be able to use using the policy you should be able to you know implement create or create or describe those mechanisms that will help you um, have make those lessons learned and help you um, yeah bring in yeah the, less, the lessons learned and knowing how to be better and better next time um, whilst continuing within um, the scope of your sustainability policy so yeah um, interesting interesting insights um, does anybody else have anything they would like to share um isaac if i may i just have an intervention from the kosovo noc with it with a request um that maybe okay. kosovo if you could kindly share thank you okay hello everyone i'm rehan hadili from kosovo noc i'm pleased to be part of this uh, meeting and uh, as Ingrid has asked us for some issues to state out, uh, I would like to ask participants and whoever to share good policies which we can use for to create our policies because more or less we are having the same mission, vision, and activities. Probably we can we can adopt some of. Uh, policies from other NOCs which are practicing very from the beginning since we are very new in this topic so probably would be nice so far we have done just campaigns in Kosovo through our activities like sending messages sharing with the federations like cans or t-shirts and uh, always we are using some motto, be the change you want to see, together we can do it. It was the motto that we use so far, but nothing in, in practice more than that. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. And um, I really hope that you know these, these policies can actually facilitate that practice and help you decide or help you navigate, you know, how you change your organization to be more sustainable, be more regenerative. Um, of course, any initiative is is good in the grand scheme of the climate uh, crisis and the grand scheme of sustainability. Um, 
but it's nice to have that that clear focus and that clear drive um, as to the way we'll, the way you can go forward. In terms of sharing uh, policies, I know that on the um, Anox Sustainability website, perhaps we could um, share them there. We also have a feature on um, the Toolbox platform where we can share tools. Um, I guess after this call, maybe we can have a conversation with Anok and see what the best way to share that knowledge is to yeah. share those exemplar Isaac. policies are. Perfect. Yeah, if I just quickly intervene, uh, this is a very good point uh, from our colleagues from the Kosovo. And also, I think it's a good opportunity to say that we are working also very closely with the IOC. And uh, they already, uh, Julie Dufus, who is here in the call today, I'll give her the floor in a little while, but uh, she's already working with uh, some with different groups of NOCs on sharing of experiences as well. So we're trying, we'll try to work closely as much as possible and sharing documents and experiences will certainly be on our task list of, for the coming months. So we'll take that uh, on board and uh, we'll come back together and can the IOC for you on, on this better for everybody. Thanks, Gustavo. Hey, Isaac, I have a comment on that. I think there's two two interesting, well, there's multiple facets to this, um, you know, great suggestion. I think on one hand, it's uh, it's about inspiration and looking, uh, looking, uh, using this amazing network um, to learn and to and to be inspired by others. Um, but also, each organization, uh, whether it's geographically, culturally, or you know, the material issues, the risks and the opportunities will be very different from one organization to the next, um, be it on the stage of sustainability that you're at or something more um, you know, specific to your own organization. So I think we all need to be comfortable to set our own journey as well. It's gonna be very useful um, for the IOC network, um, for the ANOP network to be able to not compare, but to um, have a consistent kind of reference point of where people are at on the journey, but each individual needs to be very comfortable to set their own journey and just, just to say, you know, this is where we're at right now. This is the resources we have, uh, and this is the scope and boundary. And so we should not be obliged to match the scope and boundary of one, camp, one organization to, to another. Um, the only consistent standard will be the, um, you know, if you're all signing up to the UNFCCC requirements, of course, will be the co commitment to measure, um, reduce and aim towards a net zero pathway. Um, but how you get there will be very, very different from each organization. So I would say inspiration, yes, but copy and paste, no. Um, we just had a message from Mabel Roker who wants to share the experience from uh, from Argentina. Uh, if you'd like to do that now. Hola, ¿se me escucha? ¿Qué tal? Buenos días. Primero que todo, muchísimas gracias por esta iniciativa que es este, increíblemente maravillosa. Um, soy miembro de la mesa directiva del Comité Olímpico Argentino y desde el año 2017 mi responsabilidad eh, está abocada como presidenta de la Comisión de Sostenibilidad en el Deporte y este desafío, recién Damián eh, estaba mencionando iniciar el camino, creo que es un camino de ida porque como muy bien decía, eh, es tanto lo que tenemos que aprender eh, y al interactuar entre todos estamos permitiéndonos potenciar este rol que hemos asumido de poder contribuir en, en el deporte hacia la acción climática. Nosotros cuando empezamos nos replanteamos verdaderamente qué podíamos hacer y cómo eh, dar un perfil a esta comisión que no se limitara solamente a enunciar frases célebres con deseos muy profundos, pero con pocas acciones. Este año lo que incluimos fue eh, el manual de sello ambiental como guía de buenas prácticas. Eh, dimos ocho capacitaciones sobre este manual a nuestras federaciones, a nuestra comunidad, con la propuesta de que eh, presentaran un proyecto de cómo llevarlo a cabo en cada una de sus organizaciones, precisamente orientado a reducir la huella de carbono. Eh, tuvimos eh, casi 90 inscriptos, después que lo terminaron 
47 y de los 47 presentaron 35 su proyecto y en este momento ya hay 15 llevándolo a cabo y nosotros lo estamos supervisando para poder eh, concretar esto que va a llevar todo un año. Eh, por eso lo asociaba un poco con lo que había dicho Fasad de Qatar. No hicimos una certificación porque no nos considerábamos que podíamos estar todavía en este, en este rol, pero sí dar una distinción a quienes ahora se encuentran ejecutando esto. Y por supuesto esto me va a ayudar muchísimo para poder mejorar y optimizar. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias, Mil. Um, yeah, thank you for, for sharing those comments. Um, it's amazing that you're already going down this path of, you know, cascading that knowledge down uh, through your federation. So um, that's exactly what the, the, pro the process is for. And um, yeah, sharing knowledge is always um, what we want to do. Um, I think uh, we're running a little slow on time. I understand that Guillermo uh, Sanchez wants to share something, but we'll have a question. We have a question and answer session lined up. So I think if we close. Um, the session today and then and then we'll come back and continue this conversation um, shortly um, but just to recap what we've been over today um, in the next slide um, so we've established a starting point for our organizations and of course we've made practical application using those templates um, that we've come through um, and we've looked at the sort of we've looked at making a draft of our sustainability policy which is of course the cornerstone of what our sustainability programs will be as we go through the rest of the workshops over the next um, four months. Um, so we've also reflected on these processes using the UNFCC principles um, and we've discussed and shared uh, some of our experiences. So um, I would like to um, maybe invite Gustavo to talk a little bit about um, how ANAC have done it and then we can go back into um, the discussion around um, where we'll go from, from there. Thanks, Isaac. Uh, I'll be very quick as we are uh, running late already. So uh, when we had the responsibility to build a, a, an OX sustainability policy, we were benchmarking, we were checking uh, what other sports organizations were doing, and it, it varies a lot. Some have very uh, a comprehensive documents, uh, many, many pages on what they want to do and all the objectives. And that was a bit overwhelming for us as a small organization with not a lot of uh, resources. <clears throat> and choosing the toolbox was a very easy way forward because it was simple and straight to the point. And you were able to get what we needed in a two page document, basically, that you can see there on the screen. So it, it was simple, straight to the point, very accessible. And we were very happy to with the outcome. And I think that the good part of it is that it's a clear message. And then on our commitments and also for the leadership, it was very friendly and accessible to read and accept and take on board. And also in the end, sign off uh, on our uh, challenges for the years to come. So the sustainability policy is available on the ANAC website if you wanna check it into details and see how we built around it. So yeah. That's a quick message, but that's a little bit of our experience on it. Thanks, thanks, Isaac. Excellent, thanks. And of course, as, as uh, Gustavo says, that's available on the um, on our website. Um, but I guess that kind of rounds it off for for today. Um, again, we invite questions, um, some questions now. If there's any questions you have from the rest of the session, um, and I will invite Amy to field some of those questions. Um, and yeah, we can we can make sure that you leave here without any questions in your head. And of course, I'm always available um, over email. If you email info at sustainabilitytoolbox.com, um, you'll be able to get in touch with uh, me and the rest of the, sustain of the toolbox team, um, and we'll have be able to answer any questions um, as you go through the templates on your own too. Um, and of course, you can book in a one-to-one -one session uh, with me too. Um, I should have, if, if you sign up to the toolbox, I'll be sending you an email of how you can do that. Um, but yeah, any further questions uh, for now, as we round off today? I just wanted to maybe at first invite um, Julie Duffus up to um, speak to a little bit of the support that can be provided by the ISC as well, if you're available, Julie. Oh, thanks, Amy. 
Um, this is great. Thank you very much to all of you. I've, I've known um, Amy for a, a long time now, so everything that she does is great. So um, I have full confidence that this tool is great. Just to remind you all on, online that we also have some tools as well that can help you. We have a draft strategy template, which is specifically for NOCs. And it's very much about what's important to you in your national context. So it's got gaps and things where you need to start thinking about it yourself, et cetera, but that may help you as well. Um, and also to let you know that we are here as a one-to-one -one technical support for you, but also through Olympic Solidarity, this is very much in line with what you can submit applications for. We are ready to prioritize sustainability funding for your NOC. So um, you'll have the technical and the financial support from the IOC to do any of this work should you need to. So please do get in touch with me. I'll put my email, I think a lot of you know me, but I'll put my email contacts in here as well so you can get in touch. But just to say um, thank you to Anop and to Gustavo and to all of you at the toolbox and looking forward to the next session. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Cheers. I, um, I believe I've got him gone. And I was going to say, um, Guillermo Sanchez, did you want to share a little bit about your experience? I know that you were keen to earlier. Muy buenos días. Bueno, en Costa Rica estamos en la mañana, temprano. Eh, si me escuchan bien, sí. Aló. ¿Me escuchan? Sí. Sí, ok. Bien, este, este tema de la sostenibilidad, nosotros lo hemos estado trabajando desde hace mucho tiempo. Mucho tiempo. De hecho, el año antepasado hicimos un cambio muy importante con respecto a, a un tema que se tocó sobre el, la electricidad, bajar el tema eléctrico. Y el Comité Olímpico de Costa Rica es un comité que tiene un área verde muy grande y teníamos postes de luz incandescente y la hemos cambiado gracias a un programa con solidaridad olímpica a postes de luz eh, LED con energía solar. Y ha sido un programa que nos ha resultado muy, muy bien y... Tenemos muchos proyectos también de sostenibilidad, ya que Costa Rica es un país pequeño, es un país con áreas verdes muy grandes, playas muy cercanas a, a la ciudad y, hemos logra y montaña. Y este, estamos trabajando varios temas importantes sobre todo este tema de sostenibilidad. Quería compartir eso con todas las personas de todo el mundo. Muchas gracias. Yeah, for sure. I mean, from, from what I, I know of Costa Rica, you know, there's been so many um, sustainability policies, sorry, um, programs and initiatives that, that go on in that country. And uh, it really is one of the, the global leaders, for sure. And um, I think with that, um, you know, it's, it is important to, to, you know, remember that, you know, engaging with stakeholders or engaging with partners outside of the world of sport or outside of, um, you know, your federations um, could be interesting. Interesting too. I know that Costa Rica has had a, a, a massive reforestation campaign, probably one of the biggest in the world. And you know, there's always um, alignment um, for you know your organisations to jump on board. So you know, it's sustainability is not something that we can just do together in one um, zone. It's we need to work across silos and you know go outside of the world of sport and talk to other people in different sectors um, and see how we can um, you know. In, participate with their initiatives and how they can help us um, with ours. This is especially true when thinking about our uh, suppliers and our supply chain too. Um, but yes, um, any more questions? Um, none that I can see in here. Um, just some great networking going on in the in the chat here. So um, support from Fahad if you have, uh, if you want support on the journey with sustainable event management certification. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think there was also a comment of Naomi from Malawi about the waste management project. I don't know if she mm -hmm. wants to share or just read it in the chat.
Um, I, I just have um, a question or request. Is there within the portal anywhere that um, each organization can share if they have like their own experience so that we can contribute to the knowledge platform? Um, if there's a certain guideline that shows us how we can, for example, if we have a developed like a certain slide that shows how we can guide similar analysis because there's one thing common in all of us. We're all sport organizations and different maybe levels. So definitely there's some specificity about implementing sustainability within sport other than that with all the common grounds. So if there is an area within the website, I don't know if within it's an website or within the, the toolbox website that where we can have to be able to upload something, I think that will be helpful for for the rest, if there is something like that. Yes, uh, there is um, a feature on the Toolbox website. Um, under the um, the title, the, the header, the platform, um, if you go down, there's an option to upload an asset. Um, so what that will do is you can share a file, you can share with us what's in that file, what it means and how people will benefit from it. And then it will come to us and we'll sort of have a look through it, give it approval um, and then make sure that other NOCs can and other members um, of the toolbox network can add it. Yeah. You'll also see under the platform um, section, there is a section that says members. Um, and there you can see um, it, it, it will have sort of a profile of, of somebody and then it will say where they're from, um, what organization they're from um, and when they join. And you can um, send them a message directly or see the things that they've uploaded. Um, and you can yeah, share knowledge through the sort of network um, we're still, um, I guess, in the, the beta stages of it. We're still developing it. And, you know, we're constantly looking for improvement. So if you guys, if, if, if we start, if you start using that, um, the members site as part of our site, um, it would be great to get as much feedback on that as possible mm -hmm. um, as you use it too. So, yeah, thanks for that question, Fahad. Thank you. Yeah. And just uh, again, there's a, we learned, we Anok is doing the uh, social media uh, project and there's a lot of uh, learning from peer to peer so from noc to noc and we believe the same is uh, also a reality in terms of sustainability so together with uh, the ioc we were going to see how we can promote more exchanges between the nocs themselves either through a platform or through webinars where uh, we invite some nocs to change so you can expect that uh, in the coming future as we were going to discuss more with the ioc on how we're going to do this uh, together with julie Excellent. Uh, thank you, Gustavo. Um, we have another one from back, line, I think, and then I'll pass over to Damien. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, uh, share or also ask uh, with the to this tool um, uh, box, the, uh, the work that we're doing, if we can also ask the NOCs to um in the context of their communities what their government and their country are also doing in terms of uh sustainability since many uh, most countries have signed up on the un uh, fcc maybe there are some work that's being done that we can expand to our network uh, uh to uh, help with our sustainability uh, policy framework for the national olympic committees thank you I think Isaac, when I hear that suggestion, and um, and it's um, a very obvious one, um, that's you know very much I think speaks to first of all step one and two, really understanding where your organisation fits and what's around you. You and obviously that starts with what are the, you know, um, what are the national legislations uh, and what what pertains to your organisation, uh, and also you know in fact the next step of the of the toolbox and sustainability process is engaging stakeholders and then identifying um the issues and the kind of legal requirements that relate to those issues so i think that's uh, that's spot on you obviously need to be informed by all of those um you know sort of bigger policies right so yeah very nice thank you i think it also makes contribution to also what we are doing as a, uh, NOCs and then also our, our stakeholders combined together. Thank you so much. So there, there is a specific template actually, which will be in step four or five around legal requirements that are pertain to the sustainability process um, and other standards. Um, so we'll be getting to that in 
the next two sessions from now, I believe. Shall awesome. I stay on the reins as I've got it? I guess we're wrapping up here. Um, I think so. so yeah, over to you, yeah, I mean, listen, thank you, everyone. This is uh, really amazing. Um, thank you for um, your time. The next session, 6th of December, and we'll be moving to really a new phase, which is identifying, um, engaging stakeholders and identifying issues. And this is really about um, bringing the voices in to explore the material aspects of um, opportun opportunities and risks um, that pertain to um, basically the scope and boundaries. What are we going to be doing um, with, with the resources that we have? So look forward to that. Merci, obrigado, gracias, shukran. Um,